We all know this video was gonna have to happen eventually. So let me know, what was the first John Mayer song you ever listened to and how did you feel about it at the time? Going back about a year, I was walking around the city after a gig as I usually do, just looking for something to eat. And I happened upon this barbecue restaurant and as I walked in, I saw that there was a blues jam happening and I asked the owner and he told me that this happened every week. And I was like blown away. I had never really been to an open blues jam before where a bunch of like-minded guitar players would just get together, play some 12 bar blues. We had drummers there, there were bass players there, and it was just so incredible to, like I said, see those people there on a weekly basis. And one night in particular, the opener started talking, and he was this incredible jazz guitar player from Nashville. And at the end of his set, he happened to say, would you guys mind if we played a cover real quick of this really special song? And I was like, I don't mind at all, my guy. And he opened up with this riff. <laughs> Instantly, I was like, yes, I love John Mayer. And something funny happened. The guy sitting next to me said, and I'll never forget, I hate John Mayer. And no, this is not Mike doing his whole acronym thing. He legitimately said, I hate John Mayer. And I was like, oh, why do you hate John Mayer? And he just kind of mumbled and he was like, well, you don't hate John Mayer. And as a guitar player, I was understandably taken aback, but I had to go to the bathroom, look in the mirror and say, Mike, it's not worth it. Your parole officer said you only have one more chance. But in all seriousness, if you've watched any of my videos here or watched anyone on Instagram or just talked to any guitar player in the past 15 to 20 years, you've probably noticed that John Mayer has kind of had this cult following amongst guitar players and for good reason. He's a legendary player who has definitely been one of the more influential factors in shaping the blues and pop sound over the last two decades. But much like every single musician to have ever lived, you have your fans and you have those people that don't like you sometimes for valid reasons or for not. So being the John Mayer simp that I am and having basically made a career out of making fun of how much I love John Mayer, I wanted to take a moment to not just talk about that love, to, to talk about the reasons why people might not like John Mayer or might not appreciate some of his music, but wanting to go deeper than the guy who I met at that blues jam. In doing my research and in just remembering conversations I've had with different guitar players and different musicians, the first reason why people might not like John Mayer is perception. And I'm talking specifically about his musicianship. I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase, perception is reality. And in my experience, that is the truest of the truest of the truest phrases, specifically when it comes to music and guitar playing. For a lot of people who don't really love his music, the first thing that comes to mind when you mention the name John Mayer is probably, you see the perception that they have in their minds is of the pop star, the guy who came up in the early 2000s singing that your body is a wonderland, trying to get that really radio sound and probably thinking to themselves, this is just the guy who wants to be number one on the Billboard Hot 100 star and collect as many of those as he can. And to be fair to their point, it's no secret that he didn't start out as this really shreddy blues guitar player. He started off with a Room for Square album doing the whole acoustic thing. And don't get me wrong, I don't hate your body as a wonderland, the bridge of that song has a hand stretch that's very, very difficult and very, very underrated. But like I said, if all you think of him as is that first perception with the pop thing and you don't really like pop music, and I've even heard Mayer mention this, I remember when I saw him in concert, right before he played Your Body is a Wonderland, he went, guys, this next song I'm about to play is a song that for a long time I was ashamed of because it's who I was, not who I am. And on the other side, you don't get a second chance at a first impression. A lot of people just listen to one song and then just say this artist isn't for me without giving anything a second glance. And I think that goes a lot into like the Spotify age and the age of instant gratification and wanting to like something immediately. But if you do listen to that Room for Squares album and you actually don't like pop stuff, or if you just don't like blues in general, you might have a valid reason for not listening to a lot of his music. But I do, however, think this is the most common reason that I've heard different guitar players say that they don't like John Mayer. The second reason why I've heard guitar players say they don't love John Mayer, this one is really specifically for John Mayer fans, is the Continuum effect. Yeah, Continuum, that album. The first time I listened to it, I was floored. Everyone was floored. This album isn't even just loved amongst guitar players. I remember specifically watching the hip hop artist J. Cole talk about some of his favorite songs of all time. And of course, the first thing that you would think about is that you'd probably have a lot of other hip hop artists on there, but no, he pulled Stop This Train, and that's not 
unusual, especially amongst guitar players, like we were saying. This album has become kind of the gold standard of Mayer's career. And I think a lot of musical artists, if they had had an album that iconic or that big, would have instantly said, okay, I found my thing. I did Continuum. I did Slow Dancing. I'm this guy now. But he didn't really do that. A couple years later, about six years after Continuum, he switched up the flow, moved to Montana, and wrote a folky Americana album called Born and Raised. And everyone was kind of like, wait, what is happening now? And you see the thing with that is, I cannot count the amount of John Mayer fans who I've had this specific conversation with, where they say something along the lines of, I love John Mayer. Continuum is my favorite. I don't really love the folky stuff. I just wish he would make more of Continuum. And one of the cool things I think that's just being a fan, seeing him have struck me is now he's always changing his sound. He didn't stay in the pop stuff like we were talking about before without changing. And he didn't stay in the blues stuff like Continuum. He went to like Americana and folk stuff. I mean, this album is so much more acoustic driven that the lead single on the album doesn't have a wicked guitar solo in it. The intro of the song is just four simple chords played on the acoustic guitar. This album still has some great bluesy moments, but with it being more acoustically driven, you're gonna get some pushback and you're gonna have some fans who say things like, I'm here for the old stuff. But I do think in a couple different ways, you get to see him shine with his lead guitar work in Born and Raised, like in the solo to something like Olivia. And I'm not even talking about the acoustic version, which I think is one of the more difficult things to master that he's done on that specific album. When he starts off with these big licks over the slightly modified 12 bar blues progression. Like I said, if you don't like folky or Americana stuff, it's not wrong if you don't like that album. But I think there are some really underappreciated blues guitar moments that get overshadowed by the fact that he's changing up his genre. It's not necessarily what some fans might have been expecting at the time. And the third reason that I think specifically guitar players might not like John Mayer comes down to personal antics. And I'm not TMZ. I'm not really going to break down that here. Any celebrity ever is going to get tabloid stuff, so. I think the last one that I've heard only a handful of times is that he's a Stevie Ray Vaughan clone or that he's a copycat of some other artists that have come before. And this is one that I've never fully understood because you kind of get into a Greta Van Fleet conversation where there's artists who pay homage and sometimes like in the case of Mayer with like a Stevie Ray Vaughan or Jimi Hendrix, you get a guy who has clearly drawn a lot of influence from these players that came before. One of the coolest quotes that I've heard is good artists take, great artists steal. Not to say John Mayer has straight up stolen or copyrighted or plagiarized any of those artists, but it's cool to see someone who I think has really, in a respectful way, been able to pay homage, like I said, to those artists who came before. And this one is a little less valid, I think, than some of the other reasons where, like, if you genuinely don't like pop music, then Room for Squares might not be for you. I think it's really intriguing to break down not just the chords of a solo from an artist I love or why this note works over this specific harmony. And your perception of that artist can not only change over time, but really be impacted by those intangible factors. Especially with me starting a career making fun of just how much of a John Mayer simp that I am, I wanted to take a look at not just why I love this artist or use my acronym, why I have appreciation that's earned for him, but why might some people dislike that and why might I disagree or agree? And John Mayer, on the completely off chance that you're watching this, thanks for doing what you do. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, cool to get a different perspective and if you want more videos like this, let me know. As always, all the gear shown in this video and I pulled out the acoustic, got it from Sweetwater. If you want to know more specifically how to get any of those tones or about any of those guitars, link is in the description. Make sure to like and subscribe if you had a good time and most important of all, have a fantastic fantastic day. Da, 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 da.